Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of The Pen Habit. In today's video, we're going to be talking about another pen from uh, Indian pen sales outlet Fountain Pen Revolution, or FPR. Uh, as I've mentioned before, they, in addition to selling their own pens, they also sell pens from other Indian makers. I believe the company is based here in the U.S. They uh, drop ship from India to anywhere in the world. Pretty low shipping, uh, especially if you buy several pens. It's like a flat rate shipping, regardless of how many pens you buy. And uh, and we're going to be looking at another one today. Today's pen is the FPR Dilly. This is a, a little clear piston filler demonstrator pen with, uh, in this particular case, a flex nib. Um, so uh, at, at a price of, I believe, $12 for the non-flex nibs and $15 for the broad and the flex nibs uh, and the italic nib, this is, uh, this is a pen that is probably in the same ballpark range as, let's say, a Noodler's flex pen. Uh, a little bit less expensive and, uh, and with the same sort of uh, statistics. So uh, before we dive into looking at the pens, let me just talk you through the specs on this one. It is uh, 10 or it's 14 grams total with both the cap and the body of the pen. And it is a uh, 10 grams without. So it's a very light pen. It's also fairly small. So you can see here, it's uh, it's not a terribly large pen. So the diameter of the grip is only nine millimeters. The uh, diameter of the body is 11 millimeters and the cap diameter is 13 millimeters and uh, it can be posted. So I find that I actually grip it up here on the body where the 11 millimeter, where it's 11 millimeters as opposed to here where it is only nine. It's a little too narrow for my tastes and a little too close to the paper for my tastes. So uh, it is 122 millimeters long, uncapped capped you were looking at 137 millimeters and posted it is 147 millimeters so now let me go ahead and show you what the pen uh, looks like up close on the close-up cam okay so we've got here um fpr dilly standard twist top pen so we've got a little round knob at the top you can see a little looks like injection molded almost there at the top uh, the clip is very springy, um, much like on the FPR Triveny, which I reviewed a while back. It's a little bit looser than I like, or a little bit feels a little bit more flimsy, but it's uh, it's still pretty springy. Unlike the the Triveny, which I had, however, the uh, folded metal on the the ball here, the end cap, is is well seated, so it's not going to get caught on anything, not on the inside of your shirt or your pants pockets or anything like that. It has a little metal ring here for the uh, the bottom of the cap. The barrel of the pen is uh, clear plastic. You know, you've got, uh, it, it is a demonstrator pen, so you can see everything through it, including the section, which is not terribly common. So you can see the ink uh, kind of flowing through the feed and uh, behind the nib here. The, the problem, it's not really a problem. Just one thing to note about this pen is, this is the amount of ink you have available. Despite the whole barrel, the way the, the piston is manufactured, uh, this is all the way extended. There's not as much room as you'd think there would be in a pen uh, in, this, in this piston filler pen. So don't expect that you're going to be able to use half the barrel um, to fill up the pen because that's just not the way that the, the piston was manufactured. Uh, on my particular pen as well, uh, it looks like someone got a little over, went a little overboard with the silicone grease on the inside of the section here. I mean, it is just goopy, covered with silicone grease on the inside. Uh, I'm going to see if I can take this apart once I've finished up this inking and clean that out a little bit, make it look a little bit nicer. Um, it, it, it just looks kind of sloppy and unfinished in that respect. Uh, it is just your pretty standard cigar shaped pen. One thing to note though is that the the twist end here, the blind cap for the pen, has these little ridges right along there, and those sometimes will get a little bit caught on the inside of the cap. They actually help hold the cap on if you post the pen, so it can be posted, and they help hold it on. But one thing I, I would say is be careful if you are going to post the pen. You're not twisting it on. You just have to pull it straight on and off. You twist a, a, 
twist this on, you could be uh, expelling ink out the other end. Then let's talk a little bit about this nib. So this is a flex nib, um, and it's a steel flex nib. I would say this looks like a number five size nib, so it's a smaller nib than you might find on, say, uh, a noodler's pen, which is, as I mentioned earlier, in this same sort of price range. Um, this will not in any way, shape, or form behave like a vintage flex nib or even a 14 karat gold flex nib um, that you might get on... Uh, there aren't a lot of modern pens, like an F.A. nib from Pilot. It, I wouldn't even say they're quite as flexible as some of the soft nibs you might get on, on a, a Namiki Falcon, um, but it will give you a little bit of line variation. Uh, on, on the Triphony, I had some issues with the nibs that came with the pen. I, I got several. Um, one of the problems I had was that none of they were all too fine, and none of them wrote very smoothly. They were exceptionally scratchy. Uh, I didn't have any of those problems with this nib. It wrote really quite well right out of the gate. So much so that if I were to have to compare this pen to a pen from Noodlers, which I have had in the past and don't anymore, uh, I would, you know, if you wanted to try a, a, a pen with some flex in it, just to see what it's like and start to, to learn your hand, and you didn't want to spend a lot of money, I would actually recommend one of these over a Noodlers pen just because you don't have to fiddle with these to get it to work. I've, I've had this since I got it. I've written with it. it. I've never had problems with it hard starting. I have only occasionally had problems with it not being able to keep up with me on when I'm writing letters, you know, by the, the middle of the second page, perhaps, uh, the ink is, the feed has a hard time keeping up. Um, but that's only on super absorbent paper, let's say. Um, so, you know, there's a line from uh, from the movie Sister Act 2 where one of the characters says, it was cool for what it was, but it wasn't all that. Um, this is cool for what it is. It's not a high-end pen. No one would mistake it for a high-end pen. The fit and the finish, the materials are not of the highest quality you're going to find, but it's 15 bucks. So this isn't a pen that I would necessarily get super excited over, but at the same time, it's a pen that, for 15 bucks plus three dollars shipping from India, what can it hurt? You know, you want to play around with a little with a, a cheap flex pen. This is one to, to play around with. I probably wouldn't recommend this for a beginning pen person, just because um I I have heard that there can be some consistency issues with some of these pens. But if if you're familiar with fountain pens, give it a go for a piston filler. 15 bucks, it's really not a bad value. So let's go ahead. I'm going to do a bit of a writing sample here, show you how it writes, show you a little bit about the flex, and we'll go from there. So here we go. All right. Today's pen is the FPR. It's not the Triveny. This is the Dilly. And based on their website, I believe that is a, uh, a different pronunciation of the word Delhi, as in New Delhi. But, um, Little little interesting tidbit of info there. Uh, we are using a steel nib. And this steel nib is a... Flex nib. And I'm going to put that in quotes because uh, I would not consider this to be a your standard flex nib. This is a, a little bit less flexy and uh than you might expect so um you also notice that we got a little bit of railroading there this is one issue i've had a bit more issue with railroading on this pen than i have in uh, my other flex pens actually i've had a fair bit more issue but not as much issue as i had with railroading on my noodlers pen so uh just to be aware of that the ink for today is Hiroshizuku Kujaku. Uh, which is an ink I like a lot, and I should have a review of that coming up in a, in a few weeks. Uh, I've, I've got the, the first few tests of that finished. I need to wrap them up and get it recorded. So um, let's just do a little quote here. Actually, I'm going to post the pen. I find this pen to be just a little too small for my hand being unposted. I like it posted so I can hold it up here a little bit further away from the paper. 
So anyway, back to the quote. Okay, so in terms of the standard, just standard no pressure writing, it's not a terribly wet pen. Um, it it does you know put out a little bit of a little bit of ink here. Um, I, I'm actually you can't tell because of the way the ink is coating the the inside of the pen, but I am toward the end of my fill here. I don't have as much in as I did initially, so it was a little bit more uh, wet when I got it initially. Uh, or when I first filled it, it's as I get toward the end of my fill, it's it's starting to feel a little bit drier than it used to be. Um, in terms of line variation, you know, it's 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 interesting because the the pen it it, it can it, it railroads quite a bit. Um, every now and again, I will twist the cap just a touch to kind of overload the feed, um, which I should probably do with the ink down at the bottom here. You can and you can see here. Uh, let's see if I can as I do this. Come on, Philip. There we go. So this is something that I do find myself having to do on occasion: is is twist the piston to to get the feed flowing again. And then once you do, um, you can push it a little bit further. You have to take it pretty slow um, to get some flex, more flex. So it's it's not really much of a flex nib. I would say, and and I haven't done any adjustment on this nib. Uh, I haven't tried to pull it apart. I just, you know, uh, these steel flex nibs are not my thing. Um, I don't generally care for them, but uh, they're fun to play around with when you're, especially when you're first getting started. I mean, even the um, the video, uh, the the little opening that I do at the beginning of of these videos with me writing the pen habit and a, just a terrible, terrible like copper plate style script terrible um is uh that was done with a conrad and you know i was able to get more flex out of it than i am out of this one but that had been after weeks and weeks and weeks of tinkering with it and resetting the feed and all that stuff so um i probably wouldn't use this pen for its flex you can get just a touch of variation out of it and that's kind of interesting but uh, you know in the flex world you can get a little but I don't see you getting a lot of flex out of it. It's just not the same sort of thing. By comparison, you know, if I go over here to my vintage pen here, which this is not a fair comparison, but you can see, you know, the difference between what you can get with flex. Um, it's <laughs> it's a very different experience than uh, than one of these pens. But you know, it works. It's actually moderately smooth. I wouldn't consider it super smooth when I'm just writing with no pressure, but it, it you know, it it's usable. It's I wouldn't say it's scratchy at all. It just gives me more feedback than I generally like. And I find that to be the case with a lot of flex nibs, even the old vintage ones. They're not terribly smooth. Uh they they're meant to flex. That's what they're for. So a little bit of feedback, that's not a huge deal most of the time. Um for the most part, though, you know, I, I, it's a nice little pen for for what it is and for for what we're what you pay for it. Upside down, it actually writes pretty smoothly. Very, very fine line. I would consider this like an extra, extra fine, almost a needle point. Um, so yeah, it uh, it behaves well, and it like I said, you can get this in a whole variety of different nib sizes. It comes in uh, fine, medium, extra fine, um, or fine medium broad, I think fine italic and flex are the, are the sizes it comes with. I think you'll have to check the website to be sure. But um, the the one thing I will point out is uh, these nibs do run very fine. Um, I would say even more fine than a lot of the Chinese or, you know, the Japanese style nibs. They tend to run very fine. So if you get a fine one of these nibs, it's going to be uber fine. Um, other than that, 
you know, like I said, it's a $15 pen. So you're not expecting to get a top of the top quality thing. Now, so if I were to compare this pen to, let's say, a $10 pen, a Jin Hao pen or something like that, the quality of the build on the, some of those, those cheaper Chinese pens is just higher. I mean, it, I hate to say that, but it's true. The quality on those is higher. But you have to keep in mind, you're getting a, a metal pen with, you know, with a number six size nib, uh, steel nib as well, but it's not a flex nib. It's not a clear demonstrator. Uh, so this is this falls in in the same realm to me as a lot of those inexpensive Chinese pens like the Jin Hao's, the Bowers, the Dukes, um, the Kaigalus, uh, but you know perhaps not as nicely fit or finished, but still you know still a decent pen, and uh, and if and especially if you know what you're doing, you know to be able to take this apart and play around with it a little bit, clean it out, get rid of some of this goop. Um, you know, it, it's an interesting pen to play with. I, I probably wouldn't put it at the top of my list, but it's certainly not at the bottom either. So that has been my review of the FPR Dilly from FountainPenRevolution.com. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the, the uh, comment section below on the video or on PenHabit.com. And as I say often, please check PenHabit.com if you're watching this on YouTube to, uh, to see all the additional photos that I didn't get to cut into the video. And, uh, and to read my written review as well. Thank you again for watching. We will see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Have a good one. Bye.